commandments right like you said the covering of the head when the scriptures coming out right the women show supposed to be dressed in modest apparel right all that applies to us right now you know what i want uh which one you got psalm 138 let's deal with the name all right read it psalm chapter 138 and verse 2 bring it out i will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. You see that, sis? So God is saying, remember, we just read, right? The word, this Bible, right? Which contains the word of God is the instructors in righteousness, right? Right, right. God says he places his word above all his names. Right. Right? Because all we have right now are titles. That's right. right. That's right. We don't have God's true. You know, you, you, you got we we don't have God's true name, right? No. We've been blinded. We said that in the Bible that we were blinded, and that how was well, the slavery how we spread across the other nations curses. All right. Let me ask you this: Is you, you what you're saying is correct, right? We were scattered and the curses, right? The Hebrew we speak today is it the Hebrew of what we spoke before we forgot our language? Okay, now, what I got you hold? Drop that, give me Isaiah. Give me the one that you hold. Give me that. Because when we were scattered, right, some of our brothers and sisters, right, we speak uh, Spanish, we speak Creole, right? Right. right. We speak different languages right. where we were scattered, right? right. Hey, they told us that. That's what that's not, I understand that, right? But in doing by, by process of the oppression, we speak different languages, right? Therefore, when we refer to God, right, it's different names, right, different titles, right? Because in French, you say something different, right? In Spanish, you say something, and you say Jesus Cristo, right? So in English, you say Jesus Christ, right? But is it, is it are we wrong for that? God knew that we would have been scattered, right? right? He knew we were going to speak different. Isaiah chapter 28, verse 11. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak 
to this people. You see that? To, to the blacks, the Spanish, and the Indians, right? Right. right. God, the Israelites. Right. He said, God says, with a stammering lips and another tongue, will he speak to this people? Give me uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 21. God says he's going to speak to us in a different language. Right. Because by the process of oppression, we are speaking different languages. Now, let's see if we now I'm going to say, okay, let's put the laws of God away, and then we're going to focus on the name. Let's see if God says that, right? Because remember, we are speaking different languages today. Why? No, I want you to get the root cause. Why are we speaking a different language today? Okay, let me answer it. We are speaking different tongues today because the initial problem was we didn't keep God's commandments. That's right. We are in different lands speaking different tongues because we didn't keep God's commandments. Right. Right? So, let's get, you got what I want, right? 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 21. In the law, it is written, with men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people. This is what we just read in Isaiah, right? We're going to speak different languages, right? Right. But let's see if the language or the word, uh, the language, right, or the names takes precedence, right? Let's see. Read. And yet for all that, they will not hear me. You face. I see your face. You understand what I said? Read it from the top again. I'm going to explain to you. Watch this. First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 21. And the law, it is written, with men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people. So that is happening, right? We're speaking Spanish, French, English, right? All these different languages, right? But let's see what else God says. Read. And yet for all that, they will not hear me. Listen. Sis, what's your name? Felicia, huh? Felicia, right? God says, listen. I, I, you broke my commandments. Therefore, I got to hold myself true because my law says if you break it, I'm going to scatter you into different nations or places, right? All right. I, I did, did that, that, but because I love you, you I'm going to make sure, sure the word that, that I give you that you're supposed to give you be translated in all those languages that's so right. you can learn the truth and get out of the situation. That's right. God says because it's in that language, it is up to you now to say, okay, God was merciful enough to give me this word in my language. Right. I gotta make sure I keep his commandments. That's right. It doesn't matter what language it's written in. That's right. You understand what, what it's saying? Okay, now. Give me, give me, let me, give me, give me, give me, give me, we go, we go see. We, we go, we go see because remember, we broke God's laws. We are in captivity today, right? God translated it in English, right? Brother over in Puerto Rico can be speaking uh, Spanish, right? And get the same word and the understanding, right? right. But what, what, what the law still remains the same. And you still got to keep it whatever language is written. Right. right. Read this. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. Bring it out. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Read, read it this one. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Now the scripture says, and people are doing that today, celebrities, trans, all this nah. stuff. Nah. So, what, what I want my brothers over here, my sister over here. You understand, right, what it's saying? But I want to make sure my brother and sister over here are saying. You understand what it's, what it's saying? Basically, a woman shouldn't put on man's clothes, and a man should put on woman's clothes because there's an abomination to the whole pattern. Give me an example. Uh, you got a uh, young thug. What is young thug? Uh, what is a uh, young thug uh, wearing? Skinny jeans, skirts, he had a little skirts. bad purse. Because the bad, right? It's, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy that he's wearing, he's wearing a dress, right? And the mad purse and stuff like that alone. Now, the skinny jeans is out of, so that's wrong, totally wrong, right? But it's a pants, right? You shouldn't be wearing it, but it's a pants, right? But I like what you said, a dress, right? Because that's an article of clothing that belongs to a woman, right? Now, the pants belong to who? Men. Men, right? So, should our women be walking around in pants or dressing? 
and yeah, dresses, right? I mean, we and dresses, right? Dresses, yeah. Because, give me abomination. Because God, like huh? Well, one, one thing at a time, uh, Felicia. So, because you said, so God is saying we should wear dresses, right? Yes, back then, you know, I also that supposed to cover themselves. What scripture is that? You see? Heard, no, that's the same. That's being like, you know, they give us the same. Oh, that's talking about it. Okay, okay, you're talking about woman being covered. That's talking about your head, right? When the is coming out. But as far as pants and dresses, right? Our women never learn to wear pants until the women's suffrage movement. Right, right. 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 Until what? The women's suffrage movement, right? The first article of pants, per se, a woman wore was a bloomer, right? Named after Amelia Bloomer. Which was a so-called Caucasian woman. Right, right. The, give me uh, Proverbs 3 and 31. Proverbs 3 and 31. Because that was never a women's custom. Right. They wanted equal rights with their men. They were short on the support. So they said, let's include the black and Hispanic woman. Right. right. Include that, whisper in their ear and said, you don't need the men. Right? right, right. You can be equal to the men. Right? right That's when all women started wearing pants. Right. That's when they started saying, oh, I wear the pants in the, in the house. Right. Right? Why do you think a woman would say that if it didn't have any meaning? Right. They knew in their conscience that me saying this means I run this house. Right. Right. But God's order has always been God, Christ, man, woman, children. Right? So, give me that, Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 31. Envy thou not the oppressor, and choose none of his ways. So, the ways of them is their women can wear pants. They can do whatever they want. Right. But your concern, your concern should be, what does my God say that my clothing should be? That's right. That's what your concern should be. Because God is only dealing with you. Right. He's not dealing with them. That's right. He doesn't care what they do. That's right. He cares about what you do. Right. Right? right? Because his goal is to set you above them. That's right. right. The question is, if you want that, in order to get that, you have to keep his laws. That's right. right. One of his laws just said, his daughters should wear dresses and not pants. Right. His sons should wear pants and not dresses. Right. right. That's, That's what his law says about his children. Right. Right? Now, get, let me get judgment on that. Except for now. That's just in case, God, you may think, not saying you are saying this, right? But in case the thought may come that, oh, God is just saying that. There's no punishment coming behind what he said to do. Let's see what God says. We bring it out. Zephaniah chapter 1 and verse 8. And it shall come to pass in the day of the Lord's sacrifice that I will punish the princes and the king's children. See, see that? So the scripture just said, it shall come to pass. When something gets sacrificed, something has to die, right? And God is saying, in that day, when Christ comes back, right, he will punish the princes and the king's children. You are the prince. You are the king's children. That's right. You are the children of God. That's right. He's coming back if you're not following what his father said. Like he followed what his father said. He's coming back to punish you. Right. His punishment is death. Right. Read. And all such as are clothed with strange apparel. Strange apparel to God would be what? He told his daughters to wear dresses. Right. He told his sons to should wear pants. Right. That, huh? What you say? Do they have to have what? They have to have the, the, the scripture just says. Hey, now, yeah, get there. We want to know the last said that we're not supposed to support. Yeah, yeah. You keeping it? Are you keeping? You keeping it? I feel sometimes with coming to find out everything, I've been abstained from everything. Okay, you're not eating pork anymore, right? So women are supposed to wear. We're not supposed to wear pants. No, because watch it. Go ahead, go ahead. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna explain why, right? Because you understand now the law says, right? That you should get, you should do that, right? First, uh, uh, Timothy two and nine. 
Look at that bathroom sign. Put, put the sign. Oh, yeah, yeah. This right here. Watch out, though. Take a good look at this sign right here. Now, I'm going to ask a question. You go to the restroom, Walmart, Publix, Winn-Dixie, would you, as a woman or a man, say, I'm a man, I'm going to go over here with the dress, or I'm a woman, I'm going to go over here without the dress? Bring it out. Uh, Why? It clearly signifies the gender. You, by you agreeing and saying, okay, I shouldn't be in here, I should be in here, you're telling yourself that you're supposed to be wearing dresses. That's and right. that right. So you know what you're supposed to do, right? right. But society is telling you it's okay for the woman to wear pants. Right, right. Because I'm gonna get the underlying reason why they push that. Bring it because out. there's everything these nations do to us, right? And they push on the TV, in the radio, everywhere they go, because they want to keep us in sin. That's right. Us being in sin, because, because they know that we're the chosen people. They know that yes. they're getting punished. <laughs> because we're the chosen people and us being in sin continues this. Right, society. right. We're the ones that built this nation. That's right. right. We're the ones that still been building this nation. That's right. We're the ones doing their job. That's right. right. We're the ones taking minimum wage and doing jobs that they want to. That's, That's right. right. We're the ones building up this community. Right? right. We're the ones, we're the backbone of this nation. Right. Everything they do is to keep us in sin. So right. God wouldn't fight for us. Right. right. First Timothy 2 and 9. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 9. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. We're gonna wait till this We didn't come to the topic yet. In like manner also that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. The scripture says, I like your question, right? You see, it's right? So the Bible says, in like manner also, the women should adorn themselves in modest apparel. Now, and, and opposite. Ho hold on, Felicia. Let's just deal with this one script. Hold on. Now, our young women, right? Older women. Them, not, them wearing pants or shorts, right? Coming out in the street, right? What are they doing? Yeah, they wear the shorts. So, one, you can see everything. You can see her shape, everything like that. Now, you walk on the street like that, the men out in the street, what are they going to do? Lust. Right. Lust they ask. So that's Lust. what I tried to do. Uh, yes. Sin with the eyes. Now, sin with the eyes, lust, right? But it could go so far as to that man enticing that young sister or that woman to sleep with her. Bring it out. Then from there, it continues. Right. He says now, because you dress like this, you showing everything to the, 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 the everywhere you go. Now he doesn't have the responsibility of taking care of that child. Right. right. Then that moves from there to now you living by yourself with the child, raising the child by themselves. Right. right. And so the cycle continues. Right. God saying, my laws are perfect. Right. That's right. Keep them and you will avoid all of this. Right. That's what we got to make our decision. Give me uh, Psalm 19. We, uh, Psalm 19, 7. Because we as a people, we've been walking around without the knowledge to free us. Right. We're stuck in the situation we are because we don't have the knowledge to free us. Right. The only people that are going to teach you that knowledge is the men you see right here. That's right. right. The man coming out of this Bible telling you that you're the Israelites and you must keep God's laws. Right. You are hold on hold on Valencia, that you would not find in the church, the Christian church, because they're not telling you that. Right. Right? All they want is your money. That's right. right. But let's see what the laws of God do for you. You not wear pants, right? Or, or, or shorts, the men not wearing dresses, right? Let's see, because watch, before you read that. When you do that, right? Because, where, let me ask you this. All you young sisters, Felicia, what's your name? Sh what? Shamika, right, Felicia Shamika, right? Let me ask you this. Where did you two learn that it's okay to wear pants? Who, who did you see as an example wearing pants? Then you say, okay, they're doing it, I can do it. My mama, my auntie, mm. cousin, everybody, anything I go with. Right, you know, right. That's why, that's, that's how it continues, right? Because the example was never set. Right. Right? So now you learning it, guess what you gotta do? And guess what you will become? 
an example to your sisters. Okay, and to your daughter, right? So, that's how we begin to change our community. That's what we were telling the brother earlier, right? That's how we begin to change our community. Right. Let me read this scripture. I'm going to get to you, Felicity. Read this. Psalm chapter 19, verse 7. Bring it out. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. See that? So the laws of God converts us, changes our mind, right? To say, okay, this is what God says. This is what I'm supposed to do, right? It moves us from a simple state to a wise state. Right. Because that simple state says, uh, says that I could wear shorts or man wear dress or I could go out in society. I'm going to show my figure, right? And then you bring upon a single parent ho household or all of that, right? Right, right? But the laws of God, you knowing it and practicing it, says my wisdom now is that the Bible says that for me to even have a child, right? That man has to marry me. Right. Because the law says God or marriage is honorable in all, right? That's how a family begins. A family a family begins with the man and the woman, right? Right. A household, right? Right. Because that doesn't exist, that's why we have a broken family has a broken community. Right. You understand? Right. Now Felicia, what's the question? About um They say that the Sabbath is really Friday evening and Saturday evening instead of just Saturday. Yeah. So it's Friday sundown. To Friday, Give me uh, from the beginning. Give me from the beginning. Genesis. Friday Friday the morning came first. That was the first thing. The see, the, bro the brother understand. It says the evening and the morning was the first thing. Say that in order of my thing. You see that? I like that. What's your name, brother? Eric. All right. Eric, Shamika, what's your name? Leon. Leon and Vanessa, right? Leon. Leon, right? Leon, right? Uh, Shamika and Eric, right? Flip the script, making it seem like morning is really day and evening is night. Before, before you go there, before you... everything in that Bible. Everything in the Bible is opposite to what is. Because he's the devil. Because he's the devil. That's his job. That's what the pants. How society got to set up most jobs. You have to wear pants. That's your uniform and stuff like Walmart mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But, okay, now because we understand we're in captivity, right? Right. Because of our job, we have to do that. But your responsibility, knowing this knowledge, is after you get off work, is to put on a dress, right? right. And if, if, you're, if possible, find another job which allows you to wear a dress, right? Right, right? But you have to make uh, provisions for that, right. right? Right. Now, I like what you said, right? You said they flipped everything, right? They changed everything. Everything God says, they said the opposite, right? Give me Isaiah 29, 16, and, um, and, the, and you said the Sabbath day, right? And we're going to go back from the beginning. Because we got to keep the Sabbath as well, too, right? I'm going to show you that, too. Read that. Isaiah! Chapter 29, verse 16. Bring it out. Surely your turning of things upside down shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. You see that? Because that's what it did. God says, the Sabbath day, Friday sundown, Saturday sundown, they turned it upside down. Now they say it's Sunday. Right. right? Nowhere can you find that in the Bible. Right. Nowhere can you find a white Christ in the Bible. That's right. No Bible on the planet says Jesus Christ is white. Right. But yet they flip that. Right. Right. Right? That's what they do. That's what their purpose is, is to deceive us, God's people, right. to what? To keep us in sin. Right. When we were in slavery, right? These people know who we are. They worked us from, to put it into this term, Monday through Saturday, right? And they gave us rest on Sunday. Right. So they were conditioning our mind right. to continue the process right. without their supervision. Right. Right? right? They got us getting paid on Friday, turn up on Saturday, right. and then you go to church exactly. on Sunday. Right. All the, that's what I said. All these things are set up to keep us in sin. Right. 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 But God's laws never change. That's, that's right. right. They flipped it, but God's laws never change. Right. Now let's get the Sabbath. Watch this. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. Now, the scripture says, remember the Sabbath day. Why would we need to remember? That's right. That's right, Eric. So we got to remember it now, right? 
That's why we out here showing you, right? We. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. You see that? Nobody son, does, yeah, I like what you said. Nobody should be working, right? That's what God says, right? So that's one. We shouldn't be working, right? Let's get some more. Friday or Saturday. That's right. That's right. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. yes. Yes. Yes, Valencia. Now, give me now. Now, before you go, before what you had, 16, 16, uh, 23. Because we may say, okay, well, we can't cook on the Sabbath, Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. What we should do? What must we do? What we gonna eat? I mean, anything that don't require eating. Right. Okay. But what are you supposed to do? You know the Sabbath is coming fri uh, Friday down, sundown. Oh, it's recording. So you prepare, right? All that morning, that morning to get everything ready for Friday sundown. You know, for Friday sundown. Yes, yes, sir. But we gonna get it. God is gonna tell. God leaves no room for you to sin, so you can punish you. Right. He gives you everything you need, so you can stay on top. That's right. right. Yes, That's yes. Right. yes. Right. No confusion. Read this. Exodus chapter 16 verse 23 and he said unto them this is that which the Lord hath made tomorrow is the rest of the holy sabbath unto the Lord bake that which ye will bake today so if you're going to bake something right you bake something on that Friday before sundown read and see that ye will see and that which remaineth over lay up for you to be kept until the morning see that so we're supposed to prepare cook that day before sundown, and what's remaining, that's what we eat, right? right. For that Sabbath day. Like right. you said, sandwiches, we could make sandwiches, we could have made a meal, right? But we're going to have that meal because that's what's left over, right? right. So, give me, um, what you had now? Ten? Yeah, let me get that. So, we got what? We got, uh, can't cook. Uh-huh. Uh, Friday, Sunday, Saturday, can't cook. No working, right? No working, read. Nothing that pleases your flesh, really. Okay, so we got no working, no cooking, right? Right. Now, you said keep it holy, right? In order to keep it holy, we got to, the Bible defines how we keep it holy, right? So that's what we're going over, right? right? So we got no working, no cooking, right? Let's get some more. Read. Nehemiah. Chapter 10, verse 31. Bring it out. And if the people of the land bring ware or any victuals on the Sabbath day to sell, that we would not buy it of them on the Sabbath day or on the holy day, and that we would leave the seventh year and the exaction of every debt. See that? So when so on the Sabbath day, Friday sundown to Saturday sundown, we're not supposed to what? Buy or sell. Right. Right? Wow. We're not supposed to be buying or selling. Right. Because, listen, if we were in rulership, right? Like how God said it's supposed to be. Right? How it used to be, right? But we on top ruling this world. Every business you see out here will be shut down. That's right. That's right. Because we are in power. That's right. And everybody else is supposed to be keeping God's commandments. Right. Right? But because we're not, Therefore, these things are set up now to entice us to sin, right? right? right. So we're not supposed to work, buy, or sell, right? And we're not supposed to cook. Let's get a congregation. Congregation. Got it? All right. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. Not forsaking the assembling of, of ourselves together, as the manner of some is. So, understand. We as the people, right? Generally speaking, we were trained to think in a way that says, oh, I'm going to just do me and you do you, right? right? Every nation on this planet, let me ask you this. I'll put, put it in the form of a question. When a Chinese man comes over here, right? Do you see him by himself? No. Do you see an Arab man by himself? No. Do you see everyone that comes over, they form a community and they support each other, right? They build each other up, right? Right. 
because they have a common goal, a common understanding, and a common way of life and culture. The same way as blacks and Hispanics, we have a common uh, culture and a common way of living, and it's called this Bible. Right? Right? So we as a people now, supposed to be gathering together, right? As God says, in keeping his laws, because guess what? We're all we got. Right. That's right. That's Nobody out here cares about us but ourselves, right? right? But we right. must be keeping God's laws, right? Yeah. To learn how to deal right with each other, yeah. right? Right. Because we had gatherings before, but at these gatherings, you hear of someone throwing a chair and fighting each other, right? Someone getting shot in the gathering. Why? Because they have not learned who they are and they still bear hatred to the brother. That's right. right. Right? So, read that from the top again. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as ye see the day approaching. You see that? So as you see the day approaching, as you see events in this world happening that spells Jesus Christ, the black Messiah is returning for the Israelites, right. we're supposed to be gathering and exhorting one another. Right. Hey brother, you got your fringes on, you keeping the Sabbath day, right. you keeping it right? right. Hey. You know, you treat you, you you marry the sister, right? Are you you living according to God? Right. Because when Christ comes back, that's it. That's right. There's no more chance of you to repent. Right. 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 Judgment day. Right. right. Now let's get the gathering. Zephaniah two and one. Zephaniah chapter two verse one. This is God's instruction to His people, because He knows we would have been taught to separate ourselves from each other, right? To say, oh, a brother would say, this is how this is how far we fell. A brother would say, hey, you from uh, that street up there, and I'm from that street up there, therefore I can't deal with you. Right. But we're the same people, right? We experience the same oppression, but because you live up there and I live down here, I can't deal with you. That's how far we fell. Nation against nation. Right, because of our own nation against our own nation, right? right. Because it stems from hatred for each other. That's right. All right? Now let's see what God's instruction to his people is. Read. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation not desired. See that? God says to his people, gather together, O nation not desired. Like earlier, I, you said, no, I think you said it, right? That no other nation in this planet cares about us, right? They don't desire us. Right. The proof of that is that they shoot us down the street and says, you ain't getting no justice. Right. 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 Your life becomes meaningless to them. Right. Right. So right. God is saying, because you're not desired by these people, these are the nations, right? And I'm the one that only I'm, I'm the only one that desires you. Gather together. Come and learn these commandments. Right. Right. Come and learn how to live right, right. And in my laws. Come and learn how to get yourself right That's and go right. and teach your people. Come and learn how to get right so that you can teach your brother and sister so eventually we can get out of this situation. Bring out of the out. oppression. Bring Bring give, me, give me John 832, man. Because it begins with us learning the truth. That's how we free ourselves. Right. We free ourselves first mentally because we stop saying, hey, Christ is not white. The Bible says Christ is black. I'm not an African-American, Haitian, Dominican. Right. I'm an Israelite. Right. 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 It starts with freeing ourselves mentally. And us practicing God's laws will say, okay, God only needs 144 men to rise up and keep his laws. Right. When that number is sealed with God's laws, guess what? That sky is going to crack and a black man that looks just like you is going to come and free his people. That's right. Because that's the only people he's returning yeah. for. Right. Read that. John chapter 8 verse 32. Yeah. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You see that? God, read it from the top again. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. God says, ye shall know the truth. My people, the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians, you shall know the truth that you're the Israelite. You are not an African American, right, and right. that truth will set you free. That's right. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, 
subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.